Welcome traders to another Tickmill earnings report preview with me, Patrick Munley. Before we jump into today's report, important that we adhere to the risk disclaimer. The material provided is for information purposes only and should not be considered as investment advice. The views, information or opinions expressed in this recording are solely mine. They are not indicative or representative of those held by Tickmill UK or Tickmill Europe Limited. Um, Equally as important, CFDs are complex instruments and come with a high risk of losing money rapidly due to leverage. 71% and 65% of retail investors' accounts lose money when trading CFDs with Tickmill UK or Tickmill Europe Limited. Okay, let's jump into today's report, and that's Google, who uh, report earnings this evening after the uh, close in New York. We are looking for a... $25.63 consensus earnings per share on revenue of $68.13 billion. There is actually a whisper number on the street of the earnings per share potentially coming in as high as $26.44. In terms of what to look for in the report, uh, investors will focus on the Google Cloud revenue. Uh, Google Cloud is one of Alphabet's primary business segments. The cloud segment provides developers with a highly scalable and reliable platform for building, testing, and deploying applications. It also offers workspace collaboration tools, including apps like Gmail, Docs, Drive, Calendar, Meet, and uh, more. Revenue is generated through the collections of fees related to those services. As of the end of the fourth quarter of 2021, Google Cloud had an estimated 9% of the global cloud market ranking it third behind Microsoft's uh, Corp's Azure and top-ranked, obviously, Amazon's web services. Google's cloud revenue has grown rapidly over the past four years, uh, more than tripling from $5.8 billion for the financial year 2018 to a total of $19.2 billion uh, for the financial year 2021. In the second quarter of last year, Google cloud revenue rose 53.9% year over year, its fastest pace since the third quarter of 2019. It then slowed to a pace of 44.9% year over year in the third quarter. Growth remained relatively steady at a pace of 44.6% year over year for the fourth quarter of 2021. Analysts expect Google Cloud revenue to decelerate again, forecasting a pace of 41.9% year over year for the first quarter of 2022. So let's let's take a look at what sort of patterns emerge from a statistical perspective around the earnings release. Well, stock has moved higher in the immediate aftermath of earnings, eight out of the last 12 previous reports. On average, the stock moves up 2.7% in the first day after tra uh, trading in terms of what, after the release. Based on the previous 12 earnings releases, Google is more likely to trade lower one day after earnings up for an average loss of 0.4%. The average post earnings five day performance though is an average of 1.7% and that's 75% of the time we see that average gain. If, uh, the, if the report comes out stronger than anticipated, the average earnings gap higher is 5.4% uh, and that has occurred six times in a row. In terms of what we can expect from the options market and implied volatility and where um, the options market is pricing the move, they're looking for about an 8.3% move on earnings and the stock has averaged a 5% move in recent quarters. In terms of the flow and sentiment, uh, we did see a notable buying of uh, 1,096 contracts of the $2,400 call expiring this Friday. Options order flow sentiment is bullish. Investor sentiment going into the company's earnings release has a 74% expectancy of beating earnings. Short interest has decreased by 4.3% <clears throat> since the company's last earnings release, while the stock has actually drifted lower by just over 20% from its open following the earnings release to be 13.6% below its 200-day moving average of $2,769. Let's jump into the technical setup as we... Uh, look for potential trading opportunities on the back of the earnings release. From a technical perspective, Google is carving out an equality objective uh, to the downside here, uh, an ABC corrected trading pattern, $2,338 would be the ideal level to test there to complete that pattern. Then we watch for bullish reversal patterns to engage on the long side from there, and certainly we'd be thinking about a test of trend 
um, resistance and the high volume load here up to $2,792. If we do gap higher on earnings, uh, any gap back above the pivot here at $2,564 would also be a bullish confirmation again, looking for that test of the 2000, uh, 2,780 area, that high volume load. At this stage, only a close below the equality objective would see us testing lower, looking for a test of twenty. Uh, $2,160 as the next downside objective. But for, that, for now, focuses on bullish reversal patterns above the 2,338 level to target the high volume note. As always, traders, plan the trade, trade the plan, and most importantly, manage your risk. Until next time, thanks very much.